Hey there, my name is Keith. I'm a developer success engineer with Expo, and my app is crashing. I open it up, hit this menu button, then hit this button right here, and boom, it crashes. So I need to figure out why my app is crashing. I figured you could join me on this journey where I use native device logging features like ADB Logcat and Mac OS Console to find the exact native error that is occurring when my app is crashing that information that I can then use to go find the issue in my code. So first off, we're going to try Android. Uh, we can use ADB Logcat from the command line if we have the Android SDK installed, but a really easy, nice way that I like to use it is via Android Studio. It provides a nice GUI, it gives us filtering options, and the install has everything you need. Just install Android Studio and you're good. So let's pull up Android Studio here. So I have Logcat, the Logcat tab open right here. You can see there's a, a big stream of messages here. So I have it plugged in to my Android device. Uh, you can also use an emulator. You can switch between the devices here. Uh, when you plug in a device for the first time, it's quite likely that you'll get some kind of permission prompt in your device asking if it's authorized to connect to this computer for debugging or whatever purposes. Uh, what you'll want to look for is you'll want to see that it says USB debugging connected on your device. Uh, once that is right there, you should be good to go. So what we're going to do next, well, not quite next. First, we need to get rid of this big stream of messages here. This is just too much data. So what you can do is you can filter the Logcat results by the name of your package. So the package name that you set in your expo config, your app.config.js or your app.json file. So I'm going to type that in here. You notice the messages have now uh, you know, stopped to a, a crawl or, or no more messages at all. So now I'm going to open my app to reproduce the error. We should start to see the messages again because it's now just showing us messages that are only uh, for this app. So now it's time to reproduce the crash, do the same thing, go to the menu, hit the button, and boom, it crashed. And we see a bunch of things when we scroll over here. They're kind of looking like exception traces. Uh, I see a bunch of native looking stuff, exception thrown, uh, failed to deliver, process has died, seems ominous. Now I see red, red usually means errors. I'm seeing more native uh, exception. Now I'm seeing something that looks like um, a React component trace. So I think we're getting closer. A little further up, fatal exception. Reference error, property view with a second W doesn't exist. So it looks like I tried to use a React Native component uh, that isn't a real component uh, in the standard library. So if we pop over to my code, look in here my code, and sure enough, oh, it looks like I used a view with a second W. So I can delete that, get this back to the standard component, and uh, since my app happens to have EAS update, I could actually uh, send the JavaScript update over the cloud and my users could get my bug fix on the next open and then they would be working again and no longer crashing. So that was a JavaScript error. You, there are other ways to pick up JavaScript errors, especially when you're running in development mode. But uh, what's important here to note with Logcat is this can pick up any error on the native side. So whether that is ultimately a JavaScript error or maybe it's an issue uh, with a native module, you should be able to see if the app is crashing some kind of log to this effect, some kind of fatal exception, some kind of stack trace here in ADB Logcat. Uh, it's just a matter of plugging in your device, running Logcat, and filtering those logs to find that error at that moment of that crash. Let's now try debugging this crash on iOS. So here I have an iPad. It's connected over USB to my Mac, and I'm going to run the Mac OS console app. So if you go to search and type in console, it'll be right there. So the console app has the ability to, re to read uh, logs from uh, iOS devices, iOS simulators, and your Mac. So I'm going to choose my iOS device here, my iPad. I'm going to click start streaming. And now I should see a bunch of messages. 
and if you thought ADB Logcat uh, was chatty, you haven't seen anything until you see when it comes out of Mac OS console. Uh, there are just tons of log messages coming out of iOS, so we need to filter them. Uh, and it's a little different than Logcat. Uh, you don't use bundle identifier to filter here. You can use instead process name, and this is going to correspond to the name inside of your Expo config. Uh, and it'll be a, a slugified version, so to speak, so it won't have spaces or special characters. Uh, if you're ever in doubt of what this name is, you can run npx expo prebuild to generate your iOS native folder, and the project name inside that folder would be the same as the process name that you would use in the console app. So I'm going to type that in here. And uh, by default, it'll search on anything. I'm gonna search it by process. Uh, let's just hit the home button a little bit so we can see some logs pop out here from the app getting minimized and maximized. So we know it's connected. We know it's correctly filtered to my app. And now it's time to reproduce the crash. So hit the button, the app has crashed. Uh, and I see at the bottom here, number one, I see no more logs because it's filtered on my process. My process is dead. Uh, number two, I see a, a very obvious, ominous, ominous terminating app due to uncaught exception. RCT fatal exception, unhandled JS exception. Reference error property view doesn't exist. And then I see a React component trace. Uh, I can also see some other messages that look to have some similar information. Uh, so at any rate, uh, I, have, I have in several data points here a uh, message inside of macOS console that gives me much more information about where my app is crashing. And I can go back to my code. I can look for this com weirdly named component that isn't a real component uh, that is exported from React Native. And I can turn that back into view with one W. I could update it via EAS update, update my JavaScript over the air, and my users could have their crash fixed uh, just in a few minutes. So that's how to debug it on iOS. And thank you for joining me on this journey for debugging my app. Now I, I feel much better. I can get my fixed version of my app out in production and my users will not have any more crashes. If you'd like to learn more about debugging runtime issues like a crash, you can head over to docs.expo.dev and you can look up debugging and you can find several articles including debugging runtime issues. And this will take you to a page that tells you more about using ADB Logcat and macOS console and other tools for debugging your app. Thanks for watching.